Hey, how do you like that? <laughs> Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Take three, technically. Thanks so much for coming out. We're talking about laptops for amateur radio today. Apologize for the uh, back and forth there. God, I don't know what's going on. We got some weird back end problems, but I think we got them sorted out. And because of that, we're going straight into the good stuff. So let's get started, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Apologize for uh, all the, the back end issues that are going on. But I promise we're going to talk about computers, even though I'm having so much problems with computers. I think I got it sorted out, though. Don't understand what happened, but, you know, stuff happens. So we'll work around that. This is the Ham Radio Crash Course. We're all about talking about new and interesting things in ham radio. Today, we're going to have some news stories, some pretty impactful news stories. But we will get to our main topic, which is laptops for ham radio. Portable, at home, you know, whatever it is, we'll cover uh, a lot of the use cases. And I will be talking about laptops I highly recommend, specific version numbers that you should go check out, but also cover what interesting things within that space you should look for as far as performance to run the applications that you want. Okay. <laughs> so, before we can do that, though, let's hop over to our news of the day and the news information here. Want a big shout out to my wife, Leia, for running the Ham Radio Crash Course Ham Tactical merch store. A lot of our merch ideas come out of our podcast, and today is no exception. We have one shirt, which is I've got to a brie, <laughs> which is Freddie Mercury holding a Baofeng with an abris on it. That came out of the podcast. If you do want to give us merch ideas, send them to leia.nas, or sorry, leia at hamtactical.com. That's the fast way to get that. We also have, starting our rock bottom line, as requested, Fang to keep kids off drugs. So that's available that you can uh, check that out if you're so interested. The rock bottom line is, again, a reference to kind of an inside joke within the podcast. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Uh, as well, my wife has started a blog. She got her license recently, and she's walking through her process of how she got her license, some of the interesting things that goes along with that. And so her one of her first ones is, what's it like taking an online ham radio exam? And you can find that at hamtactical.com forward slash blog. Hey, David Potter, thank you so much for the super chat. There was also another one from uh, Jody says, uh, rebuild the stream fund. Thank you very much, Jody. Yeah, this is all backend stuff. It wasn't a uh, computer side. This was really weird. My restream application, which I normally use to feed into YouTube, was just really problematic. Don't know what the deal was, but uh, I think we sorted it out. Okay. Now, Here's a really interesting thing. This happened last night. We got notified that the $35 fee, right, that has been mentioned, that the, the, the FCC's plan to implement the $35 fee goes into effect, right? April 19th, a lot of people have been messaging me. Kind of. Rhea Jaram, who's been on the show before, she posted a Facebook post that basically says, the FCC has set April 19th for the date of the rule for the $35 fee for personal radio licenses. This does not mean that the fees come into effect that date. There is no set date for that. Very important distinction. What that basically means is that the application or the, the proposal, the process of setting the $35 fee has been agreed on for the April 19th date. It doesn't mean that that is the day that they will begin charging. Could they? Sure. Will they? Eh, not positive on that. In fact, I am somewhat dubious that that will happen at that exact date because of the logistics that goes into the fees. I just got, you know, I got a GMRS license not too long ago, and that's an instantaneous thing. You add it to the cart, boom, it gets added. You got your GMRS license. They charge you immediately. Eh, it doesn't work that way, though, with amateur radio. You've got to take a test. Well, then, who applies the fee? Is it the FRN FCC website? Maybe. Is it the VEs? Maybe. The VEs haven't heard anything about this, though, so it is possible that they're not ready to get started with the fee process yet. So keep that in mind. 
Felix Farcorson, thank you so much. Please, okay, so Felix actually sent a super chat on the previous stream. I, I apologize, Felix. Thank you again for mentioning that. Uh, he, he emailed and contacted ICOM recently and said, please email ICOM about APR support in the 705. I don't know that that's possible with the 705's hardware, but maybe it is a firmware unlock that we just don't know about yet. So keep that in mind. All right. So here's a here's a bit of an insider, um, somewhat insider information. Kenwood just came out with a bulletin that uh, I think we should we should take a look at here. Important product information update to final availability of discontinued models. So the uh, Kenwood is discontinuing some of their radios. The THD74A, the TM281A, the TMV71 is limited availability, and the TMD710GA also limited availability. And they specifically called out, thank you for your continued understanding as we manage the supplies from the AKM, AKM fire and the pandemic. Now, I hope this isn't a trend, but I think maybe in the future we may see some other radios drop out and become discontinued, which I'm a bit upset about. Chris C. sends a super chat. Congrats to Leia on taking her license. Thank you very much. And Bruce Davis says, congrats, Leia, on getting your license. One of us. One of us. Speaking of that, uh, I started the first stream, and uh, I poured my beer already. <laughs> So I will mention it just uh, just so that I can say I've done it. By the way, here's a little shot of what we're going to be talking about. Laptops. But today I'm drinking a Elysium Full Contact. This is an IPA. So Full Contact means it's a 5x9 IPA. <laughs> oh, man, the things that happen when you when you try and live stream. And I wanted to give a big shout out there to uh, Rhea Jaram. That is her YouTube channel. Thanks, Rhea, for the... the she brings a lot of really cool, in, not insider information, but she's obviously the Hudson Division Director, and she has some really interesting thoughts on amateur radio, so make sure to check her out. Thanks for that. And let's see. Welcome. All right. So, Chris, W8WOT is doing ad hoc kind of on-demand testing. The link is in the description. If you want to take your test online to get your license, if you want to beat the $35 fee, the time is now. Hamstudy.org is your friend, and so is Chris, W8WOT, so make sure you go check him out. Garrett Peterson with the Super Chat. I just got my vanity call, KD, sorry, K9GCP, an extra last week before the fee. Thanks for your help. Thanks very much for the Super Chat. I appreciate that. What else? What else? And lastly, I believe I posted this in the description if I did not. Got a link from Patreon and basically says that we should check out and register for Com Academy 2021. So so thanks for the link there. The link should be in the description. But Con Com Academy, Com Academy is a virtual event. We are using Everbright and the registration is completely free. And I believe there is a schedule here that we can look at. Let's see what's in that schedule. Pandemics and power outages, what next? When you're on an island, uh, reframing how to plan for the Cascadia subsections. Grounding and bonding for home and mobile stations. Out of the pandemic and into the wildfire communication support during large emergencies. That's very cool. Windlink, digital voice, tech-based comms when Im infrastructure fails. This is not a drill. Safety and communications at Burning Man. Emergency wireless. Then the list goes on. These are a lot of really cool talks. So that goes Saturday and Sunday. So make sure to check that out if you are so interested. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for letting me get through that. We will go on a little bit past the hour. I appreciate it took me a little bit longer to get things going, but uh, we should be in the clear now, so I, I can sip this and, and calmly enjoy it. <laughs> I may have to adjust the slides for a second, though. And I do. Oh, it works. Never mind. I'm good. <laughs> Man, and I, I will uh, I will do a Discord after chat. So if you are curious about laptops and you have questions on laptops, there's a lot of really smart people over on our Discord and our Facebook group. But there will be a Discord after chat where we will continue this topic among other topics. If you just have any amateur radio questions, take the link in the description. It will take you to our Discord. So best laptops for amateur radio use. Laptops like ham radio are fantastic these days. Laptops add great functionality to the amateur radio at home or on the go. 
things have gotten a lot better with uh, laptops, so much so in the last decade or so that you can run the entire shack from a laptop in most cases. And, you know, sometimes I have to go back to, to basics and remind people that laptops add convenience and functionality to your radio wherever it is, whether it's at home or in the field. Digital communication modes, logging, right, which we all do, and communicating with your radios of really nice thing so that you can fill out a part of your log so you don't have to mess with it anymore, which is nice. Satellite pass plan tracking, software-defined radio applications. So if you're using something like the SDR Play, you can run SDR Uno on your laptop. It does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and uh, that's a great thing to have portable. And, of course, radio programming, which we will talk about as we go down along here. So the good news is that most amateur radio software does not require a high-performance laptop. Case in point, WSJTX, which you can arguably say also JS8 call fits in that same kind of space. A computer running, and they even mention XP, Linux, or Mac OS at 1.5 gigahertz or faster and 200 megabytes of available memory, which is not a high benchmark at all. So that's kind of a, a low point that you can build off of. I think it's pretty easy to get yourself into a much higher performing um, laptop well before you even get into that. And a monitor with a resolution of 780p. That's the minimum, basically, that it's calling out. And I think you can even get by with worse than that. The apps that require the most performance will be like software-defined radio. So again, I mentioned SDR Uno, which runs the SDR Play line of software-defined radios. That requires a little bit more. And this comes off of one of their websites, which I have linked in the, into the slide here. By the way, for all the patrons that are watching, all the, the presentation slides will be linked on Patreon for those that want to check those out. An Intel i3, which not even an i5, i3s are a pretty low benchmark. Four gigs of RAM, which is, yeah, four gigs is, I'd say, kind of minimum right now for a lot of laptops. A 500 gig hard drive, although this is kind of irrelevant, uh, I would argue that you can get by with much, much less. And if you can run the application, that is really all you need for hard drive space. So even more good news, generally, if you have a PC that's manufactured in the last 10 years within reason of, of how high up it is spec'd, you're probably OK to run ham radio. So you shouldn't have a big worry that you need to go get the latest whiz-bang laptop for amateur radio. You do not. There's actually more important things to consider than just the raw, brute performance of your laptop. And if you're unsure if your PC is capable of running ham radio applications due to its age or its resource you know, resources that are internal, consider a lightweight Linux distribution. Raspbian, which is the operating system that runs on the Raspberry Pi, now has a version for desktop. So you can load Raspbian on your laptop. And I have a laptop here that is actually running it, and it's running great. It's actually a very old laptop. And I would argue it's running as fast, if not faster, than my Raspberry Pi 4. So the big question, I think, comes down to more or less which operating system you're running when it comes to amateur radio laptops. If you want the largest access to ham radio applications, you're going to want to use Windows. Straight up, you know, for those of you that don't like Windows, I understand. I personally use all of the operating systems. I have major distros of Linux, Windows, and Mac OS myself. I don't have a strong preference. I decide the tasks that I'm doing, and I pick the right tool for the job, and that's considering me and you know how I like to get things done. The reason that a lot of the window or Windows applications is, is kind of where it's at is major manufacturers, they make their applications for the largest bang for their buck. So if you look at ICOM, for instance, RSB BA1, which is the software that runs a lot of the ICOM radios, that's Windows only, right? There are other instances like that that don't really have a Linux or Mac OS counterpart. So if you want the widest range of software applications to work on a laptop, it's probably going to be Windows. Linux is great, and, and I've literally ranked these in the order that I think is the ones that you should go after. Uh, I use Windows 10 primarily for amateur radio, followed by Linux for amateur radio, and specifically we're talking running amateur radio apps on the laptop. For instance, major manufacturers, as I said, only cover Windows. Raspberry Pi 
was absolutely killer in creating this stepping stone environment and where developers started to port things over to Linux or create Linux solutions because the Raspberry Pi is like the, and I don't mean this in a bad way to Raspberry Pi, I love my Raspberry Pis. It's kind of like a gateway drug, almost like the Baofeng of amateur radio communication on a, on a Pi. It, it really increased the capability that you can get out of Linux and that's wonderful. The problem though is Things like DMR, for instance, DMR software, if you go buy a DMR radio, that's largely Windows. So if you've got a hard and fast you know, DMR type solution that you need, you're kind of back in the Windows camp. Mac OS is great. I use Mac OS for editing all of my vid videos on YouTube, but I don't use it for amateur radio. I will not use it. I love it, but not, not going to use it for amateur radio. There are also less options on Mac as far as software goes. It's probably the least the least deep with the catalog of software that's available. So you do need to keep that in mind, although the major software is supported, WSJTX, uh, JSA Call. There are some good loggers that are kind of like replacements for things like Ham Radio Deluxe. I use Rumlog DX or Mac Logger when I was still using my Mac, but I am no longer using my Mac for amateur radio. One of the biggest considerations is input and output, or what we call I.O., and the physical features of the laptop. Now, although things like WhizBang 705 wireless or one single USB port to your laptop to your radio exists, I totally recommend, if you're looking at a laptop, consider one that has at least two USB ports. I know that sounds like, well, that's not a hard uh, bar to get above. You'd be surprised. A lot of portable solutions in this space don't really have two ports anymore. They do, but they're not totally portable. Screen brightness. When you are running portable amateur radio with a laptop, screen brightness is really, really paramount. And I will talk about a laptop that I think ticks all these boxes that is just a fantastic fantastic solution for those that are interested in something that will cover Windows. Um, I guess you could put Linux on it if you wanted to. Has the I.O. you need, good battery life, and a super bright screen. Battery life. Battery life's a big thing. Battery life's very important. There are a ton of laptops that favor higher battery life and can have their performance reduced to amplify battery life. You should consider that. And by the way, this is a, a universal thing. Even within Windows, you can dial back performance to get more battery life out of it, and you should probably do that because, again, amateur radio, as we've already covered, most of it doesn't require a high-powered machine. Fast Eddie, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that, but I also need to completely move that out of the way because that's going to be super distracting on the slides. So thanks for the, uh, the super chat. I appreciate it. Laptop power issues. Okay, so you, you've got a laptop, and I'm just mentioning this up front before we get into some of the uh, the the laptops that I recommend I use. Laptop power out adapters can be really noisy. If you have one, you're generally going to find that they put out a lot of noise when you connect it to your, your radio. I've got two recommendations for that. The first one's the easy, cheap option of just put ferrites on both sides of it, see if the noise goes away. If it doesn't work, you might also try a ferrite on the uh, antenna feed line into the radio. I found that that helps. But if that doesn't work, you generally have like a ground loop in the line or you've got something else going on and you probably need to get them both on the same ground. Uh, so make sure you're grounding your radio or bringing the radio ground potential to the same as the laptop that's running the laptop charger. All right, so here's my laptop recommendations, good, bad, and, and why. Buy used. Uh, buy used or use a laptop you already have. There's no reason not to get a laptop that you have access to. You've already got a laptop. Try it out on, ha on amateur. Why do I keep saying amateur radio? I don't understand. Uh, Am radio, amateur radio. Just try it out and see if it works for you. It's, it's likely that it's going to be completely fine. So, you know, take a go at it. The chat feed is frozen, my wife said. I think you need to refresh, honey. She was. She came in and said, "Like you're not live." I'm literally talking to myself for four minutes, and she's like, uh, "You're you're not live." I really like Lenovo ThinkPads, and they're really easy to get. Uh, there are really a ton of them that are on Amazon. There are a ton that are on eBay. They're relatively priced. You can even get one that's a little bit damaged and refurbish refurbish it really easy. There are plenty of guides online, plenty of parts available. They're kind of like a 
Ford Mustang, an old Ford Mustang. There's parts everywhere for them, and you can put them back together because, you know, they're, they're pretty plentiful. The T440 is a great kind of benchmark that will still run amateur radio software really easily, so I would consider that. If you'd like something a little bit more robust, relatively the same price, probably, arguably, similar performance, and possibly, possibly the best screen in terms of brightness, man, it is really, really good. Oh, you know what? That's what she's saying. I understand what she's saying now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand now. There is no chat. That's why. Thank you, honey. We will sort that out right now. When she said chat, I was like, what is she talking about? Now I get it. That should have fixed it. <laughs> Sorry to pause there in the middle. <laughs> hey, you know, when you do it live, you see all the, uh, the, the pimples and boils and how the sausage is made, so I apologize for the reality of, of live. But it's fun, right? Because you're in the chat and you get to see me stumble along the way. And a good car crash when you're at the races is always a bit of fun, as long as everybody gets home safe at night. And I'm already home, so this is fine. Panasonic Toughbooks. Love them. The one that I have is the CFC2. Well, I'll show you a little bit more of that as we go on. Fantastic uh, laptop. It's possibly my favorite amateur radio portable laptop to date, so long as I can fit it in the bag that I'm taking in the field. They don't weigh a lot, and they have tons of capability that I really enjoy. So when you're thinking about laptops, heavy is good, heavy is reliable. If you can't make a QSO, you can always hit him with the laptop. And that's Boris the Blade. If you know what that reference is, drop that in chat. So my Panasonic Toughbook, this is literally the auction that I got this on. This is a CFC2. It is an i5, 2 gigahertz processor, has a webcam, new 240 gigabyte SSD. And we're going to talk more a little bit about SSDs. SSDs are the trick to taking an old laptop and make it totally useful for amateur radio. So highly recommend SSDing all your laptops, whatever it is. They likely exist. You just need to throw it over there and partition it and do what needs to be done to do the reinstall or pull your backups over. Uh, I don't run anything but amateur radio apps on this. This is not going to run a stream. This is strictly for going out and getting in the field. K8MRD, got it. That is uh, from Snatch, which is a great, great movie. A lot of fun. Yeah, so it's, it's a good field operators kit item if you are a creator like myself and you want to live stream out in the field which i've done a few times probably not the laptop for you in fact i had two laptops when i live streamed in the field i used this laptop to interface with my radio and then i used its hdmi out into my macbook which ran the stream and that's where i was streaming from so there is my panasonic and i can show that off at the end of the stream here but it works great Absolutely fantastic, well priced. This is uh, you, you can find these in really good condition. These are used, but not horribly abused. Some of them are abused straight up, but they're even a better deal if you fix them. It's not that big a deal. Uh, Matt, Matt, Toby, I think that's how you pronounce it. Do some videos with not a Rubicon. So not a Rubicon is in Southern California. Uh, and I've exchanged some comments with him, and I'm probably going to email him. And we may go do some off-roading in the future. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, so ultra portables. Ultra portables are a segment of the laptop world that are like, think of netbooks, you know, from, from us old people. Netbooks were like these tiny little laptops that had horrible keyboards, really cramped screens, horrible touchpads. Uh, but they were nice because they were super small. So you, this was kind of before the iPads got really popular in the world. The Ultrabook is kind of like the, the evolution of that. It's a big evolutionary step, but it's still kind of an evolutionary step. They are usually bigger screens, 13 inches about the standard, much better performance over a, over a netbook, generally a very good battery on a Ultrabook, which all fits into what you want for amateur radio. The downside with Ultrabooks or the Ultra Portables is that they are not cheap 
and sometimes extremely lacking in I.O., particularly the two USB ports you want. So keep that in mind as you are considering an Ultrabook. I, this is just a comment. Again, creators, I'm mentioning it for those of you that are watching me. I know we've got a lot of YouTubers that are watching me right now, which is great. Keep doing what you're doing. I love that you're out there. I used to run my live stream when I was portable on my Lenovo X1, which is a really good Windows 10 laptop. It struggled at 1080p, and so I had to down res everything to 720 just to be able to, to push the stream out while also running amateur radio software, right? So even though amateur radio software is lightweight, when you add streaming on top of that, it can be kind of a pain. By the way, I'm trying to splash in some more video creation and stuff like that for the people watching me. Because I know there's a lot of amateur radio operators that aren't just on YouTube, but they do things on Zoom. They are doing talks. I think that's great. I highly encourage it. Um, and you should know this, right, when you think about it. Because a laptop can solve all your problems. It really can um, for both amateur radio software and, and streaming and doing video creation. You just got to pick the right one. Lenovo X1 Carbon, this is my 6th gen. This shot came from the Modern Rogue set. So there was what I took out to the Modern Rogue. That is a Yaesu 891 in the background with the uh, SCU 17. Mini laptops. Okay, so you guys know um, I love my GPD Pocket 2. It is a fantastic portable laptop. It is unrivaled in its portability. I can fit it in the front pocket of my pants. It has a pretty decent battery life. It's fully featured Windows 10. There is no shortcuts taken. Compromised keyboards, though, and pointing systems uh, are at play when you talk about mini laptops. They usually are using some crazy funky setup for how you use the mouse. The keyboard has keys that are moved every which way, and they don't exist in where you expect them to be. They're good if you appreciate their restrictions. This is a seven inch laptop screen, but it is an M3 7Y30. It is eight gigs of RAM, 120 gig SSD. So it actually cooks. It's really, really fast, but it's kind of inconvenient to use, which is kind of funny. Thanks, Joe Roscoe, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking with me as we, as we get things sorted out here live. All right, so continued a little bit with the mini laptops point. I like my GPD Pocket 2, but it's it's not really for everyone, and I really do need to re reiterate the point. It is extremely hard to type on. I like to use it for WinLink, but WinLink is an email application, and so I often will have to kind of remind myself, oh, yeah, this, this pinky is not going to do what you think it's going to do with this keyboard, so you have to get used to it. Time in, time in the saddle obviously corrects a lot of the, the issues that you could have if you were using an ultra portable like this. It's not even ultra portable, it's a mini laptop. Uh, but they are full featured. So they have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, they have an SSD, they have card slots for SD cards, and they work pretty well. Now, Mac OS, all right. So I do need to talk a bit about this because it's, if that's what you have, you should give it a go. Again, going back to the beginning of this talk, you should definitely make a go with Mac OS because it, it generally performs pretty well. The apps that are native for Mac OS run great. Not really a problem. They're not cheap though. Even the used ones have a pretty high resale value. So you are going to pay a bit, a bit more for a Mac. And if you're not already kind of indoctrinated into that world, it, it, it doesn't make a big argument for why you should go into it, particularly for amateur radio. If you're already using Windows, you don't need to necessarily go Mac, but but uh, also less I.O. Yeah, th there's not enough USB ports on Macs anymore. I will make a note for creators. Again, we're talking people that do Zoom talks, people like myself on YouTube. This is the laptop that has revolutionized my entire workflow. Um, I, I'll tell you, it's not good for amateur radio, but this, this laptop, which is tiny, it's a tiny 15 inch laptop is faster in editing than everything I've had before. I ran the live stream on this thing, uh, 1080p output, no problem on this laptop with horrible Wi-Fi, and the processor impact on this 
was almost less or, or in some cases less than the computer I'm streaming on right now, which is a nice stream uh, computer. So do consider that because whatever Matt comes out with in the future regarding the M1 chips, I, I think is going to be really special. So keep that in mind, but that's probably for people that are maybe a little bit more into spending money on stuff that's probably more expensive than it's worth. And as a Mac user, I can admit that. <laughs> All right, tablets versus Surface type devices. And Surface is like Microsoft Surface. Microsoft Surface devices will allow for amateur radio because, it, again, it's running Windows. The problem with Surface devices is they are lacking in I.O. Again, you want to have two USB ports unless you're using like a 705. The 705 is fantastic for stuff like this. One USB port, no problem. Hook it into the 705, you're good to go. Or because it's running Windows, also no problem. But also a little bit of a problem, you got to buy the RSBA1 software, which is $150, which is not cheap. But you can run it from the Surface, uh, the Surface Pro. Now, I'll say the same thing with Windows 10 tablets, but again, you got to be considerate of the I.O. You want a good two-port I.O. because, again, worst case scenario, maybe you get a different radio or maybe you're like me and you, you try out a ton of different radios. You may run into a radio in the wild where it's got two USB ports. And so what do you do? Well, you should have a laptop that at least has two ports. Note, big, big note, the Surface Pros performance-wise will likely cover whatever you need for amateur radio. The Surface Go will struggle. The, the Surface Go is not as robust with its performance features. So you should keep that in mind as you're going forward with you know whatever laptop you're going to buy. And again, Surface device. Chromebooks, don't. Don't don't get a Chromebook, and I, I hate to say that because I think it's actually some of them are very very uh, very cheap, which is great, but they're really a pain in the butt to get going. There 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 are some options, but it's really hit or miss. You have a very tiny sliver of applications that actually support whatever amateur radio endeavor you're you're interested in. Programming radios, uh, running digital modes whatever a logger even that you, you really don't have a lot of options with chromebooks so i would just say put those on the shelf and and don't worry about them okay so ipads and android tablets not really a laptop although the the ipad pro kind of dips into that space a little bit so there are some native applications that run in in android and also the ipad so you can do things like some packet radio solutions. APRS, there are a lot of APRS Android solutions, which is great, but you're not really gonna do JSA call, WSJTX, and have a interfaced logger solution. There are Android loggers that you can just type in your log information and save it, but part of the reason why we want to interface the laptop is so that we could get the information for logging, which band you're operating on which mode you're operating on, maybe even pull the information of the user you're talking to from the internet seamlessly and get it into the log. I know that Android apps will do the, the QRZ pull, but you know, keep that in mind. The iPad Pro is possibly as fast as, as my MacBook M1. They're really, really fast, but no interface for a radio, no USB port. So you're going to have to highly leverage something like a Raspberry Pi to give you what you're seeing in this picture, which is my I iPad is running a VNC application. That VNC is letting me tunnel into the Raspberry Pi, which is on the same network that the Raspberry Pi is spitting out the Wi-Fi for. And that's what allows me to get to the desktop for the Raspberry Pi. Is this a is this a simple solution or, or a um, refined solution? Not, not really. I, I, I think it's, it's okay. It's acceptable in a lot of portable amateur radio setups or if you're going to do like a soda or, or a POTA. Worst case scenario, this doesn't work. You just start calling out single sideband. No big deal. But this is, this is an option you can go. Again, it, it's kind of a gray area with the laptop space. Raspberry Pi devices in general, I got to mention it because I know people will mention it. And I have a Pi Top, which is a Raspberry Pi laptop here 
on the desk. Raspberry Pi, there are, a, there are a ton of applications that exist for Raspberry Pi, and, and there are many ways to interface a Raspberry Pi. So that makes them good. They're very inexpensive, too. So you can deploy multiple Raspberry Pis, which may cost you the same amount that you could get a used laptop for. I own a Pi Top. I own three or four Raspberry Pis. I've got one in a really cool slick case. They're great for STEM activities with my kid. They also work for amateur radio. However, I, I do not necessarily advise them for robust, portable amateur radio. I know that many people will disagree with me, and that's, that's okay. I, I appreciate you can do your own thing. No problem there. I think they're kind of slow. Uh, I have, a, <laughs> I have a, a netbook that is running Raspbian right now, and it runs it much faster than a Raspberry Pi. Does that mean that the value option of the Raspberry Pi is any less valuable and that you shouldn't use it for amateur radio? No. I know that this is a laptop discussion, but I have to mention it because I know there's people already talking in the chat about Raspberry Pi. With, with good reason. They're very cheap and they do work. My personal opinion is that Raspberry Pis are really good if it has like kind of a single function. If this is your APRS Digipeter. Raspberry Pis are great. If this is kind of like your go in the field and run JSA call or WSJTX or even run RDOP uh, on WinLink, go ahead. Just understand that it's going to run a little bit slower. It, it's going to be a little bit less powerful than a laptop that you would drag into the field. If you would like a robust solution for having a multi-day portable or you were trying to build a radio preparedness kit, and then having a backup Raspberry Pi that can function as a server for needed documents, connect to a radio for doing asynchronous communication with JSA call messaging or WinLink or whatever, that's great. It's a good extra layer, a backup, if you will, to a laptop. So I'm not throwing any shade here. I'm just kind of like if you if you take everything I've said in the last couple of weeks about personal preparedness, I think they're good, but I think they should be layered with, with multiple devices. So there is the laptop that is running Raspbian right now, which is a kind of fun experiment that I decided to do. I was running Ubuntu on this for many, many years. Raspbian runs fantastically on it. It is a Dell Mini 9 that I purchased, I don't even know when. When did these come out? 2009, 2008, somewhere around there? I put an SSD in it. It, it functions wonderfully. It's a, great, it's a great little device. I don't know how much they are now. They're probably very cheap, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go get one of these they're not they're not the greatest uh, laptops but they're all right they work but as a larger statement old laptops netbooks work fine in a lot of cases for amateur radio if you do again as i mentioned in the beginning of this of this chat that we're having if you do end up with a, a used laptop and you want to try it out Go for it. The only thing that you may have to do, and there's probably two things you have to do, is consider an SSD, a solid state drive, no spinning parts, right? just a chip that acts as a hard drive. Solid state drives are fantastic for you know, running amateur radio or just any computation at all. It's going to make it much, much faster to access the hard drive, so you'll be able to move much, much faster. It'll make the laptop seem like it is five years newer than it really is and then maybe drop some more RAM into it because that will probably help it out. Also, given the age, because laptops that are 10 years old plus, they likely will need a battery upgrade. There's probably no real way around that, so I would go ahead and consider that as well. And so here are my big tips just to add to whatever it is you're gonna do with a laptop. Get yourself a Sabrent USB sound card. You'll never know when you'll need one. In fact, I would just buy two. It's kind of like those uh, BNC posts, you know, the red and black posts that we use for wire antennas sometimes. These Sabrent cards are fantastic for connecting to any kind of computer. They're all plug and play, and they work really well for interfacing sound directly into your computer, whichever one it is. And we've talked about these cards before, but they deserve extra mention. Have an old laptop. I mentioned already put an SSD on it. Spare batteries are fantastic. I'm going to do a little show and tell of some of these laptops. Uh, the Toughbooks make this really easy. They actually have switches that you can pull out a lot of stuff, like the SSDs. Works really well. Uh, and if you're running off of a charger, 
you know, because you have an AC line connection, you might want to consider making sure there's some kind of ground, as I mentioned, as I first got started with this talk. So yeah, that's my slides. So let's go ahead and hop over here. I'll pull this over to the overhead and we'll we'll talk about some of these. I will just go ahead and give you a shot though. So the 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 tough book is the one that's right above my my body here. The Pi Top is the green one. The Dell Mini 9 is the one that's open on top of the Lenovo. And then I've got the Mac and the GPD. And then I've got in the background uh, a uh, Lenovo T30. So I want to I want to show you some of these and then, you know, we, we'll we'll call it a day on that. So let's flip her over here. That's the Sabrent card. I, I do get so many messages and emails on the GPD Pocket 2 that it, it kind of needs a, a strong mention here. So the MacBook Pro is a 13-inch laptop, and the GPD is sitting on top of it. That is how small it is. It is really, really small, the, the GPD Pocket 2. The link is in the description to Amazon where if you want to look up how you can get one of these. The problem though, and you can see it here, the problem is it has a absolutely constrained, let's go to manual, there you go, an absolutely constrained keyboard. It's actually quite a chore to type on this if you're not familiar because the semicolon uh, or the, the commas down here, periods over here next to the arrow keys, it makes things kind of difficult. But it does have two USB ports, which is why I like it, as well as a USB-C port for charging, which makes it really, really nice in that effect. So this is this is a good laptop. Now, in, in comparison to size, you know, again, how small is the GPD Pocket 2? That's the Dell Mini 9, my, you know, over 10-year-old netbook that runs Linux. It, it's kind of hard to put into perspective how small this thing is. Right, it's just absolutely tiny. But that's my Dell Mini 9, which is still a good laptop as far as cheap, really, really cheap and expensive netbooks go. Um, okay, so the the star of the show though, I, I think for those of you that are interested in getting a semi-robust laptop is the Panasonic Toughbook. Find one that fits your, your budget and how robust you wanna be and how portable you wanna be. This is as heavy they're actually similarly weighted, believe it or not. The Panasonic Toughbook is maybe a half pound more than the MacBook Pro. It is designed to be modular, so I can drop this little switch here. Drop this little switch. And is it this one? No, it's this one. I don't want to take the... Nah, it doesn't matter. Drop the switch, and out comes the, the SSD. Uh, this is the battery, but it's on. <laughs> So I'm not going to take that out. But it also is interesting because it has a hand tether that you can just hold it and run it as, is it locked? There we go. Run it as a tablet if you're out in the field. Do I do that? No. <laughs> but could you? Yes. Would I? No. Now, on the on the realm of a little gimmicky kind of stuff. Um, I, I have no I have no shade to throw to to Raspberry Pis. Again, I, I think they're great and I've obviously done videos about them. The laptops though for Raspberry Pi are a little weird. And I do have a video on on the Pi Top. They're chunky. They got a big fat bezel on the bottom here. Uh, this is the IO interface for the Raspberry Pi charges right has an internal battery it has a, a pretty nice screen all things considered and it has a pretty nice thumb pad but this is not a robust laptop this is not necessarily something you'd want to do portable and, and here's kind of why let me let me show you what's going on so this is the the pi top so that's the raspberry pi and it uses this board on the gpio to connect to this daughter connection slot and that's the speaker and i have included a breadboard uh, that's on here. This is more for STEM folks uh, or young kids that you want to teach programming to or, and are interested in that kind of thing. Probably not what you necessarily want for amateur radio, or though you could just, you know, just consider that as, as some of the realities of it. It's a cool laptop for that kind of stuff, though. K 
Kay Booty, thank you for the super chat, buddy. And then to put, to put again, size into perspective, that's my ThinkPad Carbon M1, which is a little bit wider than my MacBook, but it's about the same width. It's lighter, though. The, the, M, the X1 is lighter than the M1. I have carried this uh, multiple travels, obviously traveling air travel, no problem with this. A lot of, lot of fun to go, and you can tell my uh, this is an older sticker, so that's that. Lastly, lastly, the, the really reliable Lenovo ThinkPad. This is a 430. These are great. They're still good. They're still effective. There is a ton of I.O. This even has a serial port, USB ports, an actual CD-ROM drive, SSD, or sorry, SD. Um, this is a micro, you don't even get cards like that anymore. And many, many USB, even a, a connection for Ethernet. Okay, so that was kind of my thoughts on some of this. Uh, I'll, I'm looking for questions though, so I'll take those now. Appreciate everybody hopping out. And again, we will do the, the after chat on the Discord for those that are interested in that discussion. Those are the laptops there. Uh, that's video. Oh, it is video, you're right, that's not serial. Good call, too many pins. Uh, <laughs> question for Leia. Are these all Josh's computers? Yeah. Uh, Evan asks, what Pi is in the Pi top? That is a Raspberry Pi 4. So that is a proper Raspberry Pi 4 Pi top. Have you tried a folding keyboard with the GPD Pocket 2? I have. Uh, good question. In fact, I'll give you a strong recommendation on this keyboard, and I do have it linked to my Amazon. I like this guy. So this is a great keyboard. Uh, it's like a jelly, jelly comb. The cool thing about this is it's Bluetooth. It's micro USB, so you can connect directly to a computer. It also has a mouse with it. So, this works really well if you're going straight to a Raspberry Pi. You can do that, and that's easy. Um, it also works with the GPD Pocket 2. Which, again, just for size comparison, we're, we're adding that there. And that's, a, that's an easy solution for whatever you're trying to do. Phil Dural 762 buddy, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thanks for adding to Ham Radio what was missing when I grew up. Wow, that's very nice. That's that's very kind of you. Hey, I'm just out here having a conversation. As far as I consider it, is we're just friends having a beer. You don't have to drink. You can just watch me drink. But uh <laughs> appreciate you coming out. I really do. And thank you for the super chat. It means a lot. All right, Grayman423 says, not on subject. The SDR bug has bitten me. Uh, I I love SDRs. I think they're uh, I think they're a lot of fun. Again, I I was a listener well before I was a transmitter. Right? Uh, I I grew up listening with a shortwave radio. Would put little bits of wire together to make my antenna longer and just have fun out there. I I absolutely love uh, shortwave listening. Chris uh, Jimenez asks, Josh, do you carry an external battery option in a Go Pack? Um, kind of. Um, the problem, problem with Go Packs, and we kind of talked about it last week, is you got to keep those stuff, that stuff topped off. I should also, I should also mention that again too. The one of the reasons why I like the GPD Pocket 2 is it will charge on much lower voltage than a standard laptop which means you can charge it off of a uh, USB um, 
USB C battery bank pretty easily. It will it will charge up just fine off of off of some of the smaller powered ones, which is why I generally take that in a go bag. Because again, it's a go bag. How much time am I going to be like? Oh, I'm going to sit down and type out my thoughts in my digital journal. Probably not many. So um, I don't carry batteries. I would rather carry like carry like a solar panel with an appropriate 12 volt battery to feed my radios, and then I would use a charge controller with a USB interface, which is exactly what I use. Um, I will, since we're since we're just talking questions and stuff like that that I'm taking, I will show you what I use. I've already showed the panel before. It's the um, BioNO panel. I think we can get rid of this now. See that keyboard folds up real nice. The Buddy Pull Power Mini is fantastic charge controller. So battery input for your 12 volt, your solar. You have two loads. Those are an Anderson power poles, and it has a USB output. So you can do a lot with this, and this is, you know, it's it's also fairly small as far as its size. So I, I love that. TS with the 762 uh, by 35. Okay, 300 blackout. Thanks for the encouragement. Got my tech general done this AM. Now trying to find an FT60. Availability is worse than Freedom Seeds, dude. The FT60. Wow. Uh, there are when. We had a really big surge of amateur radio interest, and the FT60 took off like uh, took off like a firework. It was crazy. There are um, extremely long lines on getting an FT60. Long lines are just you know no stock available. Uh, Don asks Hammer and Crash Course, what do you do for time date? when you're outside cell range? Great question, great question. And that's another thing I will, I'll just grab something and throw it on the table. Now, I, I am lucky that, um, I am lucky that the 705 already covers a lot of this because it has an internal GPS. One of the links that I have on my uh, Amazon page is to the GLONASS GPS device, and that will absolutely work for pulling GPS data down they're very inexpensive too. I think they're in the realm of 10 bucks or something like that. And I do have a video on connecting that to a Raspberry Pi and how to pull pull the GPS data down. Glonaz. Not Glonass. That's my name. But Oh, okay. S uh, safer or Saffer. He said I get loads of noise when cat controlling my 705 to my GPD micro PC, even when running on the batteries and putting ferrites all on the cable. Yeah, put it on the antenna side. Try that. And then ground the whole thing. Ground that. Ground that 705. All right. What else we got? Got a mix. Lots of really good comments. Appreciate everybody hanging out and dealing with me as I got things kicked off there. I, I hope it I hope the stream came out okay. Like I said, we will be running the after chat on Discord, so make sure we uh, make sure you join us over there. There we go, back that up a little bit. Yeah, license update, but so everybody, you know, don't don't let um don't let my news story fool you. I still think you should go and get your license ASAP if you don't already have it. Definitely go get your license. There's no reason not to. You really should. If you're interested in it, please do. However, <laughs> however, if you are interested in getting your GMRS license and you haven't yet and you don't absolutely need it immediately, it's going to go from $75 to $35, which is a ton of ton of savings. $50 savings on a 10-year license is pretty good. Sign me up for that. Do you mean the Earth Ground, uh, the 705? Yes, David Horvath. That's exactly what I mean. Earth Ground, that 705, the best you can. Okay, Booty says, they have a hard time remaining lock. Um, eh.
Oh, uh, K Booty says, don't get the GLONASS GPS that comes on a cord. The chipset is not as good as the white pill one that I'm showing right there. I will trust you on that. Mine doesn't drift. Uh, Nowhere Man, can anyone give me the link to the Discord? Yeah, it's in the chat. It, oh, no, you know what? It's not pinned anymore. All right. So let me let me sort that out. <laughs> uh, it's in the description, though, of this uh, video. So you should be able to pull it that way. Do we have any admins on right now? Or mods? It's okay, I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> there it is. There's the link. You can go check that out. Daniel Clausen, is the W8WOT testing for everyone, or do you have to live in a certain location? Uh, it is for everybody that wants to get an, an American amateur radio license. So you can, uh, you can go to the website, which is w8wot.us, and you can contact Chris, who is one of the moderators on the Ham Radio Crash Course, and you can set up a testing appointment with them. Okay, booty with the clarification. Don't add a extension to the GPS. Got it. Uh, Frank Wilson asks, how hard is it to connect these older rigs to new monitor screens with HDMI output? Hmm. Not really. I guess I need more. How hard is it to connect these older rigs? So you mean uh, radios to new monitors and screens with HDMI input. So if the if the radio doesn't have an HDMI output, then connecting it to a monitor is going to be difficult. You would need something else to go in between, some kind of software. There's not a lot that does that. Okay. Fast Eddie Beckwith. Josh, I knew it. This is a pretty fun question. Can you tell me how or if I can track a NASCAR team with my SDR? Possibly. Possibly. You would need uh, an appropriate software-defined radio and a laptop or something along that line. Uh, you would use like a dongle, like an RST... SDR dongle connected to some kind of uh, vertical antenna, likely a two meter or 70 centimeter antenna. And you would hope uh, to know what the frequency was that they were operating on. You would kind of have to know that so that you could dial in a little bit. But if you were looking at the entire waterfall, you could kind of poke around and see where the discussion was going on. I would hope that they were on FM, but if they were using a digital mode like uh, DMR, you would have to change things up you'd have to run some software to decode the DMR. And DMR is digital mobile radio. It is a digital encoding of voice information. Scout75 with the super chat, thank you, Scout, says, semi-related, which rig is easier? Less cables, dongles, etc., to run digital in the field. The seven, oh, the X5105 or the Yesu 891, looking for the easiest route. Uh, it's it's the X5105. The X5105 is actually really easy to use if you get the, uh, what is it, the SCU19 or the SC19, something 19 interface. It's a little interface box. It's got a weird shape to it. That makes it really easy um, to connect to a computer. With that said, what is it easier to make contacts with? Likely the 891 because it is 100 watts output. So can, yeah, CE19, CE19, thank you. K Booty got it and so did uh, Evan, appreciate it. Yeah, the, the X5105 will be easier to connect for CAT control and audio, but the 891 is gonna be better for making contacts, which is a thing to consider. Oh, 
That's right, K-Booty. K-Booty knows what's up. <laughs> All right. All right, so PA3DZN <laughs> says, if first responders are on digital, how can an SDR pick them up when an SDR won't pick up DMR without additional software? And he's got the mind-blown emoji. All right, great question. RF is RF. If it's above the noise floor, your SDR or radio is going to hear it, but it's going to sound like an audible tone it's going to sound like or something like that somebody's already typing how is that josh how is that it's going to sound like some crazy noise why you need software is to take that crazy noise and convert it back into human language english for instance or whatever you're still going to pick it up but it's going to be unintelligible to you it's still a signal that is transmitted in RF space, and you will still pick it up, but you will not be able to decode it. And key word here, very important word. I'm not saying encrypt or de-encrypt. I'm saying encode and decode. Very different stuff. So I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, so daft Minecraft. I agree 100% with the 891. The that is the SCU 17. <laughs> There's so many crazy acronyms and numbers. SCU 17, I think, is what it is. What the uh, 891's uh, sound card, external sound card device. Yeah, I, I won't do dial-up noises. I only do that. I only do that at home in the bedroom with Leia. Sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. DMR go burr. That's right. Hey, PA3DZN says, thank you, Josh. I am local and hope to have a conversation or have a beer with you someday. Man, I am. I agree completely. Uh, we will definitely get, you know, what, what sucks so bad is nothing like a pandemic to make you feel bad about all the things you said you do and you didn't do. I have been saying, this is before COVID, that uh, we were going to do a meetup. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't do it when I had the time. And I feel so bad that I, I didn't make it happen. It really bums me out. I feel really bad to everybody. Um, not that you're coming to see me, but that just this is a great community that, that is here now. There are so many people that are engaged with it. I think that's amazing. I, I want to do a meetup really bad. I want to be able to meet up with everybody and just hang out. And if that could be like, man, could you imagine that'd be like a monthly thing? That would be amazing. And I, I promise you, I promise you after all of this, we're going to make something happen because we've got to. We, we've spent long enough in, in the houses. we got to get out there and start having some, some fun. Pigeon Man, sorry. Yeah, the, um, the YouTube's had some problems today. Not my fault. <laughs> Wasn't it's was never my fault. No, I, I actually don't think this one was my fault. Yeah, and, and you know what? So that again, I say for everybody who who got their license, not just because of me, but you know, all the, the wonderful people that are out here on YouTube, all the creators are doing their own fun interesting things for everybody that got started in ham radio i'm telling you hang on guys because it's going to be great it's going to be even greater than it is now every day is going to get us a little bit closer to solar maximum and you're all going to be loving it yeah jeeper creeper josh and leia need a cross-country vacation yeah leia was uh living vicariously with that van life stuff that's on tiktok she was wanting to buy a van and just, just we're just gonna go man we're just gonna go that's not leia and she's got a little bit of a valley girl thing going on but not uh, not that hard and i was like babe you're not this is not reasonable what you're <laughs> this is not this is not real life john G uh john gendron gendron says best damn hobby on the planet well i'll give you a big cheers on that <laughs> that's i agree i agree completely 
Okay, so I've, I've gone significantly over time because I got started late. I think I'm going to wrap it here. I would love it if you followed this conversation that we're having right now. We can have a two-way conversation where you can talk directly to me and ask questions. And not just me, many, many, many other smart people that are on our Discord. We literally have the largest ham radio Discord on planet Earth. Uh, there could be other planets with bigger ones, but I don't know where we have a ton of amazing people that are able to help and answer your questions and that's why it's there and i am uh, i'm absolutely all about that so i and my wife says i am insulted <laughs> so i guess i did my job for a proper live stream if my wife was insulted i i really would hope that you also try and subscribe to us here on the podcast we podcast wherever you pod if you search for ham radio crash course and it is very different than the content you're hearing that's just me it is my wife and i and we we go because it's not just ham radio so i hope you're ready i hope you buckle up all right with that said i have a big 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 thank you to all the patrons thank you so much for the support i'm not saying that your patronage bought all these laptops actually it it didn't i would say that arguably um i think almost every one of them i bought before patreon but the gpd pocket too the we'll 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 definitely sign that up to the support that patreon gave and that is my primary portable laptop that is the one that goes in small little fanny pack backpacks or big backpacks it doesn't matter i've got a waterproof container for it it's absolutely fantastic and uh, yeah, so if it wasn't for Patreon, by the way, the Patreon, how it works is it's a it's a monthly thing. We've got a couple different levels. Every level gets my newsletter, which I put out once a month, and it goes into topics that I don't even talk about on the YouTube. Some of the topics turn into their own videos, and Patreon gets to pick the first video of the month, every month, which is the first Saturday. We call it the Patron Picks, and it's a lot of fun. And then, of course, we got the brew crew, which, you know, I'll hold up, pour one out for the brew crew. There's Jeeper Creeper. Appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, laptops are a cool discussion, and I, I know that we could have turned this into a, like, let's talk about the software you should load on your laptop. That is a, a separate video, and I've, I've covered one-offs, like, here is the title, go go run it and this is how you install it i wanted to go real high level like these are the laptops you should get you should think about these laptops because i think there are a couple of really good options that are very inexpensive go buy those uh panasonic toughbook cfc2s before they're gone i think that's a uh, i think that's a solid win and you're gonna like it and there it is the brew crew thank you so much appreciate it all right, so I would love it if you followed me over to Discord, if you if you have the wherewithal. Hey, everybody, keep in mind, when you join us on the Discord, uh, Discord is a, a little bit of the Wild West. You're joining the younger crowd when you go over to Discord. Because of that, we got, like, crazy stuff that happens over there, and one of the byproducts of that is that we have the, the security shields are raised, the deflector shields are raised. So when you join and you can't immediately get into the voice chat, have no fear, it's just a couple of minutes, and that time's out. The reason for that is we got a bunch of bot storms. The bots would join in, in a storm of bots and just spam all these things like buy Bitcoin, buy all this other crap, and that was just clogging up the entire Discord. So there's a bit of a timeout, so they can't do that, so they get stamped on by the amazing admins on the Discord. But go do join us, hang out. You just need to turn on your webcam, turn on your mic, just like you would do for Zoom, and you can ask your questions live to me and all the wonderful YouTubers that will already be there. Anyway, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. You have been watching the Hammerdo Crash Course. I really appreciate you sticking through uh, for that crazy bumpy start that we had, and I really, I really hope this <laughs> worked out and it was helpful and interesting because I'm a little scatterbrained at this moment. And I, uh, yeah, I, I just want to give you good information. That's that's my biggest goal. So I hope that help. Uh, I'm going to flip it over to the memes, and I'm going to say 73. Allow me to play you out. Nick Smith! Thank you, sir! 73. I didn't forget about you. All right, now I'm letting you play it out. <laughs> Take it easy.
I'm really just looking at the memes myself at this point. I don't know who's sticking around, but uh, call an Easter egg. We're going to let the memes roll. Adam, I agree with you 100%. G90 is greater than the X5105, but they both have their places, and they're both decent radios. Big shout-out to Sonic D, the creator of this song, who I don't give enough credit to. That guy, one of my best friends. I wish he... He's got to do the best thing, but I wish he never moved. Check him out. S Sonic D. I'll, I'll figure out how to post that on the, on the Twitch, because he is out on Twitch, and you should check him out for the hot tracks. Dire Havoc, I'm so happy, man. Yep, you made it, bud. We're about to wrap it up. I hope you join me on the Discord. Take it easy.